our mighty Father will worship and reference you for calling us together in this Wednesday early every reminder. Please speak to our heart, speak to our soul. Give us perfect understanding of your will. Let us be useful in your kingdom and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for what the Lord has done for us. And today is a very wonderful day that we are going to see the Word of God together. Please, let's turn our Bible to 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. I read, Whosoever transgresseth and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. If they are coming unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive not, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For if for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. I pray the Lord will help me and you in the mighty name of Jesus. Will not be partakers of evil deeds of people in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we are looking at a very important topic today. That is doctrine of Christ. That's a deep thing. When we are talking of doctrine, that has to do with the whole policy, principle of the person. Number one, we need to realize God is holy. His Son Jesus Christ is holy. Is the only one that came to the world sinless. So if we must be in the doctrine of Christ, number one is holiness. Why? Without which we cannot see God. Let's go to Hebrew and see together. Please open the Bible. Hebrew. Please open your open the word of God to Hebrew. And let's see together. And the Lord is going to help us in Jesus' name. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace, holiness goes together. Now, follow Jesus, without which no man shall see the Lord. Because it's the way. That means the doctrine of Jesus surround holiness. Holiness means purity. Holiness means total abstinence from sin. If that is the case, then this topic, our study today, is very, very essential. That let's read that verse 90. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, at not God, he that abided in the doctrine of Christ. He are both Father and the Son. Because the whole principle of God is holiness, no sin. So to actually, no matter what you want to study in, in the doctrine of Christ, you need to look at holiness. What do you want to do? Holiness in all. You want to deal with your family, holiness. You want to deal with your business partner, partner holiness, transparency. You want to deal with your country, Holiness. You want to drill with your colleague in the office. Holiness. Anything you are doing is holiness. In your ministry, holiness. Actually being able to bring people together. The main thing we are bringing them is to live a life that is faultless. No guy. Look at what the Bible says so that we still consider some of the followers and some of the people that will make it eventually. They have traits they have character and i pray the lord will help us in jesus name let's look at it from revelation chapter 14 from verse 3 and they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn the song but the hundred and four hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Don't forget redemption, transform, 
translated, very important, and what are their character and nature? Because when you are redeemed, when you are transformed, you follow the character, the doctrine of Jesus, of Christ. And that's why not transgressing against the doctrine of Christ is very essential. And we need to know the owner of the doctrine is holy. So if he's holy and his father, then we need to pursue, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the law. If you want to actually substitute that word, those words, peace and holiness, follow Jesus, without which no man sees the Lord. So the doctrine of Jesus Christ has to do with peace. When you maintain peace, you are holy. Because in any situation you are, when God recognizes you, then peace will reign. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Verse 4, verse 4 now, that is Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Look at the followers. Look at the book that actually we inherit the kingdom of God, the redeemed. He said, they are, they were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. That means they are not destroyed. The, the value of human nature in them is not destroyed. They are not deflated spiritually. They are not deflated. They are not useless in the society. They are not selling their body anyhow. They are not actually using their mouth anyhow. They are not using their tongue anywhere. They are not actually going anywhere they see and actually publishing Jesus with their life wrongly. They are virgins. He said, they are innocents. Good. They are innocents. All their life is to look unto Jesus, to be like Jesus, to behave like Jesus, innocent and virgin. These are they which follow their followers. The lamb with the swever he goes. He goes here. He goes there. They are following. Because the word of God actually is a lamb unto their feet and a light to their path. And the word that speaks to you, their spirit and life. And this word that came from heaven is the one that is offering. And it's Jesus Christ himself because he was in the beginning with God. And it's the word. So that word is what made them actually when you follow the word, you obey the word, you're following the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this word, as well as the spiritual word, the, the one that we obey to follow the word, the one that saves our soul, that is the word. He said they follow uh, the lamb where the server is going. They look at him, ah, because there's a way that seems right to the man. The end is death. But the way that is actually of Christ, the way of redemption, the way of, 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 of heavenly way is Jesus Christ. And that is the one that actually we follow and we follow the Lamb wherever we have. He said, These were redeemed. They are not just, they are redeemed. They are called out, they are bought with a price. They came out of sin and unrighteousness. They are redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. They don't say this and mean another thing, they don't deceive people. They are not deceptive. They are not mischievous. Look at it. He said, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Number one, no guile, no fault. I pray God will give us a blameless life. We maintain a guiltless life and we operate a conscience, a conscience void of offense before God and man. Three points we look briefly. Number one, the doctrine of Christ for the transformed. Not anybody that is not transformed, not renewed, not tra not changed, not translated, cannot operate in the doctrine of Christ because that doctrine is unique. Is bore is the one that is enveloped in the blood of Jesus, and without know that Christ, how can you live in that doctrine? Verse nine says, "Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ." He had both the Father and the Son. So the condition to operate in the doctrine of Christ is salvation, redemption, transformation, a change from sinner to saint, not by your power, but just come to Jesus. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Oh Lord, enter into him from today. I live a holy life for you. And that holiness, which is the main, the doctrine of Christ, any other thing surround it because holiness is the key to heaven. The Bible says there's a way and I wish I be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. No unclean thing shall pass therein. Because the way, the way of holiness is the doctrine of Christ. See not. 
Don't commit sin. Don't go into righteousness. Flee fornication. Flee all unrighteousness. Flee, flee evil. Lie not one another. All these are the doctrine of Christ. That actually, if you want to understand Christ more, go to Matthew chapter 5, verse chapter 6, chapter 7. The beatitude. The blessedness, the happiness in Christ that come from the salvation of Christ, which make you to be actually to be poor in the spirit, which make you to mourn and be comforted, which make you to actually be meek and you, you make you to be merciful and you obtain mercy, which make you to be a peacemaker. These are the things a doctrine of Christ, and which actually make you when they revive you, revive not again. When they persecute you, persecute not again. These are the doctrine. And you see the sort of the world, the light of the world, you are there. And actually, when they actually they, they, they fight against you, you are not fighting back. You are the line of God. You give vengeance to God. These are the doctrine of Christ. When they slap you in the right, you turn the left. When they actually take one of your coat, you give them out of your, out of your suit. When they actually say, go one mile, you go to mine. Doctrine of Christ. Are you ready? We are going to obey it. We are going to put, put the Holy Spirit in... The Holy Spirit will put us right in the center of the doctrine of Christ, which is not like the world. And nobody can practice by carnality, by some formation, the doctrine of Christ. Or the first thing I've told us is transformation. That's why I say doctrine of Christ for the transform, redemption. Living sin, confessing, and committing your life to Jesus. Then you live through the Holy Spirit, a sanctified life. A holy life, a pure life, because he said he has not called out unto cleanliness but unto holiness. God bless you as you follow. Are you redeemed? If not, tell the Lord Jesus, I don't even understand this language. But no, sin has not left lying, deception. I've not stopped actually going to visit that woman Saudi. I've not actually stopped that all this evil, even all this hatred is still in my heart. All this vengeance is there today. Confess when you confess, you repent. When you repent, you renounce. You call Jesus into your life and you do it. The old, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice, I'll open the door and we come into him and I will shop with him and he with me. Jesus loves you as you are confessing and you are and he's confirming you in the kingdom. The Lord help you in Jesus' name. Let's go to point number two without wasting time. That is deny contradictors of truth. Those who are contradicting the truth, you deny them. You are not their friend. It's not that you won't preach to them, but you are not in their company. Let's look at um, Second John chapter, sorry, Second John chapter one verse ten. If there come any unto you and bring not the doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Very clear. Don't bring. Don't allow. If they come to your house, whatever they say, don't actually bid them God speed because you know. They are deceivers. So don't be don't be them God's speed because all they want to do is to destroy what a gamma is with you. Let's look at uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is heretic after the first and second domination reject, knowing that he that is such is sub, is sub, subverted and, and sin it, being condemned of himself. So deny them. Let's go to point number three. That is dealing with conspirator is transgression let's look at verse 11 for he that bideth in god's speed is partaker of his evil deed we shall not partake of the evil deed of the enemy in jesus name we shall not partake of the evil deed of the enemy in jesus name because if you partake you will not be able to make it because he will teach you his way, you will learn his way, and you will be disobedient to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much because we live in the doctrine of Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.